Morning everyone, it's a beautiful weekend day in Western Washington. It's extra special because I got my big boys here this weekend. So as a treat, I am making them homemade pretzels. And I'm going to share it with you. Michael doesn't want to be on this, but I'm forcing him. So say hi, Michael. So um, stay tuned and um, we will be making homemade pretzels. Yeah, you're All right, so today's recipe, we are making pretzels. These are um, really good. They taste just like the pretzels you would get at a mall. And they're really pretty easy to make. I am making a double batch because I have a large family of six. And uh, they eat them up pretty good. And I'll probably serve it with some leftover fettuccine alfredo sauce I have in the fridge. Or make a quick cheese sauce for them to dunk it in. But the first thing you need to do is get warm water. Um, all I do for warm water is just turn on the hot water. Uh... On the hottest it goes, run it for a minute and um, use that water from the sink. So you need two cups. Okay, so I have two cups of water in my mixer. Excuse the noise in the background. I have a house full of children. So that's kind of what you get when you have children. A lot of noise. So you want a tablespoon of yeast. You can use any kind of yeast you want. I've had luck with a regular, regular active yeast. This one's a quick rise yeast, which I've never used before. Um, so... Just one tablespoon of yeast. A lot of people like to let their yeast kind of grow and stuff like that. I don't. Every time I make my breads and all that, I put the yeast in, I put the sugar in, and it, it works just fine. I don't let it bloom or whatever it is that they say it does. Um, I just let it go. So to that, you want two teaspoons of sugar. Wow. And you're going to want about five cups of flour. You can start with three, hold it back, mix it for a while, and uh, see how it goes. But we're, yeah, I'm going to probably do, um, I'll probably do the full five. Bread making is not exact science because everything changes with the weather, with how rainy or humid it is. So sometimes you need more flour, sometimes you need less. <laughs> and then on top of that, I'm going to put two teaspoons of salt. <laughs> All right. Lock this down. Turn it on. With the KitchenAid, when you're making dough, you never want to go over number two, the number two notch on your KitchenAid. You want to always run it on one or two. I have it on one. So I'm just going to let it combine and see how my dough starts looking. Um, see if I need to add more flour. What you want to do is uh, let it run let the water absorb all the flour and see if it will start pulling everything off the sides of the bowl. Once the bowl, the sides of the bowls are clean, you got yourself a pretty good dough. If it's sticky like it is now, you might need more flour in it. So I'm just going to let the water work its magic for a minute and see if it gets absorbed into all that flour to see if I need more flour. Yep, I'm going to put another cup in. I'm choosing to put another cup in because it's all just sticking to the sides of the bowl. Nothing is pulling away yet. So that tells me it is way too wet and sticky.
I'd like to have one of those really big KitchenAid mixers one of these days. But this works like a charm. It, it's good faithful. Old faithful. Does everything I need it to do. So it's starting to work. I don't know if you can see in there on the move yet. Um, if you look in there, you can see that the dough is starting to pull away from the sides of the bowl, but it's still quite sticky on the bottom. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour. No, 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 that was probably about a half a cup or so. Ooh, making a mess. Okay, this dough's looking good. So the sides of the bowls are coming off clean, the bottom's kind of coming off clean, so I'm going to set my timer and uh, let this knead for five minutes in the mixer and I'll be right back, okay? Mixing. So I'm going to lift this up. Now this is a really super sticky dough, just for warning you. So you want to flour your hands pretty generously. And take the dough off. Um, and I always err on the side of more wet for my doughs than too dry. Because it's just better. So. Got to get all this dough. Now this is the weird part. You want to coat your dough ball with flour. Because we have to let this sit and rise inside a plastic bag for half an hour. And it is truly a sticky dough. And uh, it'll get stuck in your plastic bag. Now you could go buy little plastic bread bags at the grocery store at Walmart or something. But um, I'm just going to use an old grocery bag. Because that's what I have on hand. So dust it. Pretty good on all sides. And I'm going to stick it. Stick it in this grocery bag. Make sure it's up nice and covered. Fold the ends but leave space in there so it can extend. And I'm going to place this near the oven that I have preheating at 475. That's raising for half an hour. I'm going to take two cups of water with uh, four tablespoons of baking soda and dissolve it in the boiling water. And then I'm going to remove it from the heat and let it cool down while that is raising, okay? So I'll do that real fast to show you. Here, let me put you down. Moving you around everywhere. Okay, so I got two cups of water, and I'm going to add four tablespoons of baking soda. And once it's all dissolved and heated through, I'm going to take it off the stove, let it cool off. Um, this is going to be used to soak our pretzels in after we form them and before we bake them. And I will show you that process when it's all done.
Okay, when I set my timer, while well, this is heating up for 30 minutes. And I'm gonna to continue to dissolve the baking soda water. And um, I will be back when we're ready to form the pretzels and bake them in the oven. All right, so um, this has been resting about a half an hour and I am gonna take it out of this bag. This is always the hardest part. Sometimes it expands so much depending on how hot your house is that it gets really sticky in here. So yeah, it's always an adventure. Oh, not so bad. Came out pretty good. Ooh, it's so soft. Very nice dough. Oh yeah, that is beautiful dough right here. So I'm just forming it into a ball. Because this is a two times recipe, so I'm gonna cut it in half um, and just and just bake half of it for now, just to show you how to do it. Then I'll make I'll make the other half later for um, all the kids to enjoy. So I've got half the dough. We'll set this one aside. So I got half the dough here. Let's see, move you guys so you can see better. Use the shakiness. Okay, so uh, this is enough to make eight pretzels. So what I'm doing is just going to form it into a little log. And I'm going to try to get it even. Cut it in half once. Cut it in half again. And again. And then cut these pieces in half. Sorry about the screaming. The kids are playing video games against each other all in the same house in different rooms. So they get excited. Okay, so I got enough for eight pretzels. So what you want to do is you want to roll them out. This is always the hard part is rolling out your dough to get it into the shape you want. Some days are easier than others. been really nice having the big older boys here. The little ones have missed them a whole lot. So they get some quality time hanging out with the little guys. Playing video games and doing all that fun stuff. So, sorry, shaking you up. Okay, so once you reach your desired string, all you do is uh, you cross it over, spin once, and you pinch. I don't know if you saw that. My hands are big and you form the pretzel shape. Yeah, they don't look very pretty. I'm not very good at this part, but you know, it's about the taste, not about the looks. And then after that, I dip it in the baking soda mixture. The baking soda and water I had heated, I put it in a shallow pan and uh, just give it a quick dip and put it on my cooking sheet. So let's try that again. See if I can get get it better. To be honest, um, I never make the pretzel shapes. I just make them into sticks and make them that way. My kids prefer them that way. But just because I'm recording, I am attempting the pretzel shape for you. Okay, so circle, cross over, and then pinch.
And it's a pretzel. Dip. And on the cookie sheet. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest and um, I'll be back to show you uh, when I put them in the oven and what they look like, okay? There you have it, folks. Those are um, eight pretzels, all shaped and ready to go. At this point in time, if you wanted to add pretzel salt, you could. Um, we don't use pretzel salt. We uh, we dip it in, or I brush it with the butter and all that fun stuff, which I will show you. But for now, I have my oven preheated at 475. I'm going to stick them in the oven for 8 to 9 minutes. doesn't take very long. And um, once I pull them out of the oven, I will show you what I do from there. All right. There you have it, folks. Those are the pretzels I made today. Um, you don't have to use parchment paper when you bake them. I had parchment paper, so I decided I'd try it out because I usually bake them on just my regular cookie sheet, but I wanted to see. And um, on top of just baking them, I sprayed the parchment paper. I don't think I necessarily had to do that. I don't know. If you know, can you comment below if you have to spray parchment paper? I just did it because it was something new. So what I'm doing now is I took a stick of butter, which will be used for... Um, two times the amount of pretzels I have here and I am just brushing them to absorb all the butter and I'm gonna brush them a few times over so they get really truly buttery like the pretzels you get at the mall top kiosks and stuff like that and um then they're ready to eat they're best served nice and hot and warm they do carry over really good I would reheat them in an oven and foil or in an air fryer though. I probably wouldn't microwave them just so they get a little bit of their freshness back. But um, this is it. The kids are going to love these. I'm going to make a quick uh, cheese sauce so they can dip it. So they can use that as a dipping sauce. They still have to make the other eight. Um, with the other eight, I think I'm just going to avoid the parchment paper and the spray altogether because I didn't really need it. I just wanted to see, but it does come off easy. And, um, that's about it. So, hello. All right, thank you for watching um, our pretzel making. It's really good. Behind those hands is my handsome son, Joseph. Fat son, Joseph. No, he's not fat. He's beautiful. So, um, you guys, tonight we're making... Peanut butter bacon cheeseburgers, which is a family favorite, and I'll be making a twice baked potato casserole to go along with it. I might bring you along to show you how I do it. Um, I know peanut butter bacon cheese sounds all weird all together, but it is really, 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 really yummy. Look at the light is horrible. They can't even see our faces, Joey. So anyway, thank you for watching our video. You guys have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.